This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, been following this man for many, many years over at the Atlanta Journal Constitution covering the Falcons. It's D Orlando Ledbetter. Follow him on Twitter at D Orlando AJC. Always looking sharp with that bow tie. D Orlando, how you doing, my friend? Hey, oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the show today. It is great to have you on. You know, before you came on, I was talking about Arthur Smith, who I thought was such a beautiful play designer at Tennessee. He did such a great job with the offense. And it seems like that offense has gotten better as the season's gone on. And again, it shows what a marvelous play designer and offensive mind he is because he has gotten more out of Cordero Patterson than anybody ever has uh, because most guys have used him as a special teams guy. But he has been able to find a way to use him in the run game and in the pass game. And I find it to be incredibly impressive. Yes. Oh, they uh, they had a plan for him. Coach Dave Ragon was with him in uh, Chicago. And they started, you know, playing with him, being out of the backfield a lot more. Buffalo tried and used him in the backfield. Uh, and certainly the Falcons saw enough to like, OK, yeah, let's try to maximize his touches whether it's throwing it to him down the field, uh, whether it's throwing it to him short, whether it's handing it off to him. They've been able to get him the ball at every level uh, to attack the defense with. And that's been the, the highlight of the season so far for them. It's getting Cordero Patterson going. Now that teams have seen that, uh, what is that going to look like on tape and how will teams try to uh, defend that? That's uh, certainly will be the next step in their utilization of Cordero Patterson. And, and listen, again, kudos to him because, you know, it's been a, a journey for him. He's bounced mm -hmm. around. And, and I remember, you know, obviously, D. Orlando, you and I bounce around a lot in the offseason, and we always run into each other. Mm -hmm. And I remember when he was coming out of college, a lot of scouts and GMs and stuff would tell me, I love this kid. He's super raw, but he's got a nose for the football. And this was a kid that a lot of people loved in the NFL, but he was so raw. And uh, I'm just proud of him because he's had to kind of fight a lot of adversity and people telling him that they like him, but he still ends up getting cut and ends up on another team and another team and another team. And Arthur has been the one guy to really maximize his talent. I'm impressed with that. Uh, Calvin Ridley's back. Uh, Gage is playing well. They've got two tight ends. Talk to us a little bit about this passing game because D. Orlando, the the secondary for the Dolphins, has struggled big time. Yeah, the passing game has been a work in progress. Um, they came out throwing a lot of short, quick passes, wasn't throwing the ball down the field at all, uh, worried about their line and their protection. Uh, but as the season has gone on, the line has gotten better. They're doing a better job of protecting, and he's been able to, to uh, hold it a little bit longer and get it down the field a little bit further. But it's still a work in progress. Um, they threw a lot of deep balls against Washington. Uh, Ridley, you know, they were contested because they're hanging up in there because you got to throw them a little earlier. And uh, Ridley wasn't coming down with him, was taking hits. Um, Kyle Pitts, even on the big 39-yarder against the Jets, you know, the balls had to be hung up a little bit. But he went and got it and braced himself for the hit because the hit's coming. So um, it's it's a work in progress, the passing game. Their precision is not there, um, and they're working through that part of it. Um, they hadn't have really truly integrated into the attack, even though he leads them with 27 catches. But, you know, they threw 13 to him uh, against Washington. He only caught seven. So, um, and, K and Gage has only got like five, but it was just through two games. So, you know, getting those outside guys going with Pitts and Patterson, which they do have working, could, uh, you know, um, make this offense go to the next level. Is, is Pitts everything, uh, everything we all labeled him to be? Uh, yeah, no question about it. He is. And, you know, but I tempered it because, um, you know, tight ends haven't come into the league and dominated. So, you know, 
thousand yard last thousand yard tight end was two thousand two Jeremy Shockey. So I was trying to temper the expectations of uh, whether, you know, you know what what this kid was going to be able to do. But they, um, you know, he's got off to a slow start and. He, um, you know, had a big game last week, breakthrough game. Now we'll see uh, what he can do from here. All right. So, D. Orlando, from an outsider's point of view, how do you view this whole Tua situation? First of all, how do you look at him as a quarterback? Are you part of the, 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 the group that's given up on him? Or are you part of the group that says, well, wait a minute, he's not the problem here. He's done all right. Yeah, he's a, he's a talent. Uh, you know, arm strength is uh, one of the issues I hear that I hadn't heard before. Uh, have the injuries taken its toll on him? Have they taken away some of his strength to drive the ball down the field? Uh, we know he can read defenses. He was reading them at Alabama. Uh, we know he can do the quick game. I saw that here uh, watching practices. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking he's not the problem. Uh, as I go over the the went over the Miami stats this week, you know, against good teams, they were getting pounded, you know, by the Bucks and Buffalo, and, and some of these other games, the Colts game wasn't quote close either. So that suggests to me that uh, you know injuries is is a factor here. The defense may not be as good as we thought it was in the um, in training camp and so forth. So there there are more issues here. And more layers to the situation than just you know whether Tua can carry the team or not. What do you think about this Watson mess? Because uh, I, the Orlando, I still have a problem believing that even the NFL is going to allow any kind of a trade to happen. Because by chance, if this young man happens to be guilty, you're actually allowing teams to trade what could be labeled a criminal. That would not be a good look for the NFL. <laughs> So I'm just wondering, what do you hear? Because you've always got your ear on the ground around the NFL. Well, yeah, you know, the uh, the criminal part of it is uh, new. That's the FBI part of it. But we do know there have been 21 civil suits and, and uh, allegations made in those civil uh, cases. So uh, the, the the onus would be on the Dolphins investigative team to to, to – bring back information whether as to, you know, his availability. You know, they need to have a talk with the league. Hey, if we trade for this guy, is he going to be available? Um, you know, so they got to do some due diligence and let this situation play out. Uh, but, but um, you know, it seems a little bit uh, premature for me uh, to think that they're going to draft two and give up uh, on him in his first year of action. Uh, but we did see Arizona do that with Josh Rosen. So right. uh, it is not unprecedented anymore. So once you get a kid in the building and you figure out, okay, maybe this kid is not who we thought he was, getting Watson would solve some of your quarterback issues. And I know him and George Godsey were together in Houston for a period of time. Um, you know, that might fix some of the issues. But there are other issues here that have to be addressed. Is he is, is to a franchise quarterback in your eyes? Uh, yes, he is. I think, you know, uh, if you put the right uh, pieces around him, you know, certainly uh, you can roll him out. He can throw in the move. He can make all the throws. So, uh, you know, it's a matter of blocking for him. I saw that as an issue watching the yes. London game. Uh, yes. And, uh, you know, putting some playmakers with him. I understand Devontae Parker's out today. So, you know, he's missing one of his key playmakers. So, yeah, if you put the right people around him, and that's from – you know, Thomas Dimitrov telling me about uh, Matt Ryan and, and early on in his career, he's like, hey, we know we got to put pieces around him. So, uh, but he's going to, he can make all the throws, he can read the defenses, and we're going to be okay. And he's been right about that. And I, I feel that's the same situation that Tua's in here in Miami. Make sure you follow him on Twitter, D Orlando AJC. You can catch his work there at the Atlanta Journal Constitution. D. Orlando, what was the prediction for you in the Journal Constitution today? Who'd you pick, Miami or Atlanta? Um, I didn't pick today. I try to stay away from the picks, but uh, my, my fellow colleague Steve Humber uh, is going with the Falcons here today. He's uh, he's been uh, four he's been uh, four and one so far this year. All right, all right. So they got the Falcons in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. D. Orlando, my brother, thank you for taking some time. As always, I appreciate you. I owe you a cigar. I'll, I'll be able to hit the road this year because it looks like I'll be able. Last two years, I haven't hit the road because of damn COVID. 
But I think uh, now with my uh, my my shots and my booster, I'm ready to hit the road, baby. I'll All see right, you on the road. All right. All right. Look forward to seeing you on the road, and I'll I'll take take you up on that cigar offer. And I have a great will. day. Thank you. You know you will. You be good, mm -hmm. baby. There you go, D. Orlando Ledbetter. He's a good man. Uh, we have uh, shared many a cigars down the line with D. Orlando. He is a a good man. I like D. Orlando. I uh, appreciate his time there.